Today, I will be cleaning up my kitchen. I don't know if it really counts as reorganizing when it's not organized in the first place. A lot and a lot and a lot of life stuff happened and things literally just kind of got piled up. Hopefully this will be a good before and then there will be an after. This is the worst corner right here. This door here is blocked off. This goes to our enclosed porch. There's our enclosed porch. And we can't even access it unless we go outside right now. Sorry, I just stepped on some Cheerios. These Cheerios are my toddler's play Cheerios. They are not for eating. See how this microwave is not very accessible? That's how we get stuff in the microwave is we like, let me show you, we get like a bowl and then we kinda <laughs> do it like that. I have a list of specific goals that I want to accomplish because my sensation of whether or not I feel like I got enough done is kind of off. I want to restore the porch access. We put that here just because we really, really needed more surface area. As you can see, we have, I don't know, maybe four square feet counter space. Just a wild guess. We've been using the stove as counter space. So that table was gonna be our wonderful counter space. And you can see what happened. I, I'm gonna have to figure out something with this whole thing. This is all like manufactured space. This is just a wall here. We've got a table with wheels, we've got like a rolling cart thingy with wheels here. Um, this is actually a nightstand down there. And that's our portable dishwasher. It's not hooked up to anything. And this was actually supposed to be a plant stand, but it worked out so well in here that we left it. And see, this is a door to the outside, and this is a door to the basement. So we can't block off this area at all. This kitchen is pretty small and it has three entrances. That's to the rest of our house, of course the porch door, and then this one. So we're kind of limited in where we can put things. Okay, let me find a good spot for this. Oh, final thing. So I am learning that it's not enough to just crank out my to-do list because at the end of the day, I'll often... Oops. At the end of the day, I'll often feel rather unfulfilled. And so... I want to do this in a way that's fun to me, and that's why I figured I would record, because, hey, it's fun. Let's try putting you over here. I'm just manhandling you. What's spilled is a bunch of capsules, because I couldn't find the lid, because my toddler left it somewhere. But I'm just learning that the way I go about doing things really affects how I feel during the day. This is terrible lighting. And so I'm trying to learn to go about things in a more enjoyable manner. You know, the whole thing of like the journey is just as important as the destination or some sort of crap like that. I don't know, I think there's something to it. Okay, let's take a can of soup and let's set you down there. Does that work? Ah, oh, come on. Okay, you are balanced on top of a pan that's on top of my dish rack, so if you fall, that's what's going on. Oof! So I automatically want to start with doing something that is easy to me, and I have clean dishes put away, and it makes me happy to do it, so I'm just going to start there. Da, 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 da. This basket is actually for use with our dishwasher, but we weren't using it, so I repurposed it. And I found some prescription stuff that brings back bad memories. That can go in the trash. I'm just kind of following my momentum right now. This isn't strictly associated with my goals, but this corner is just really bothering me, so I'm going for it. I need like a tape container. Let's see if this box works well for it. so much tape here. Oh, come on. I'm currently using a roll of tape to hold pens because we had a pen holder thing but um my toddler there we go we had a pen holder thing but my toddler took it somewhere I don't know where 
this is going to be our new holder thingy. And the tape can go in the tape box. I don't know where the tape box is going to go, but at least we will have a tape box instead of random tape shelves that used to be organized, but then people just started tossing things onto it and that didn't work. So here's a box that people can toss things into. Hopefully I can find a good spot. Our couch broke uh, two days ago and we were like why is it missing a bunch of screws where they were holding up the legs and that's why the legs snapped off and uh, <laughs> these are the screws. <laughs> Oops! We must have, someone must have found them on the floor and been like huh I don't know what these go to so we saved them just in case. A lot of good that did us. Our couch kind of still works we've kind of currently like propped up the legs so that as long as as long as you don't like go back and forth on it it holds your weight, so people just have to be careful to sit straight down and not move at all. So as long as we do that, we have a couch. I have weird stuff like this spray adhesive. Our kitchen is too small to have things like spray adhesive in it. Shoe goo. Yeah, that goes in the tape box. <laughs> a second thing of shoe goo. My husband got me this lighter. Look how pretty it is. I never use it. I don't know how to use lighters, really. We've tried putting fluor... fluor We've tried putting some stuff in it, but I react, like, my lungs react to typical lighter fluid. So, like, we've tried some, like, alcohol, and that just dries right out. So, I keep it around, though, because it's just so pretty. It makes me happy every time I see it. He gave it to me early on in our dating days. Where to put this? Not in the kitchen, that's for sure. I'll deal with that later. Mm hmm Mr. Yuck stickers. I put them in the closet like, oh, I need to like really like decide and think hard on how I'm going to use these. And then they just in the closet. So let me just stick them on a bunch of medications. Get some use out of them. The state sends these to me for free um, because I have a toddler. Right now he doesn't understand Mr. Yuck stickers. So I have this like fear of getting things wrong. So it's like, I'm afraid I'm going to not ration my Mr. Yuck stickers correctly. I know that sounds ridiculous, <laughs> but that, that's just how my brain works. And so because I'm terrified of not putting the stickers on the correct things and then running out of Mr. Yuck stickers, then I just don't do anything. And I'm like, okay, I'll just figure it out later. And then later never comes. And I end up so with so much anxiety that I end up not using them at all, which is worse <laughs> than just sticking them on some things and calling it good. So <sighs> I am trying. I'm working through it. It's, I don't know, like, it's hard for me to relate to people who don't live with these types of anxieties because to me, this is just my everyday life. I'm becoming more aware of it and I'm working on it. Awareness is the first step, they say. Huh, wonder what that is. Whatever this is. I haven't seen it in a long time. Haven't wanted it, haven't needed it. It's gonna go. All right, well, that looks nice until I put stuff on it. That's what I'm working with so far, but I have all this stuff to figure out. And that box of tape and adhesives and random 3M hooks. Anything like adhesive like I'm putting in that box. I don't think the box will fit on the shelf, will it? I don't think I want it to though. Again, our kitchen is small. Why are we keeping tape in it? On the lid to the thing that fell earlier. Yes. I found the lid. It was under the stove. I was pulling out the door from under the stove and I caught a glimpse of it and I checked and I have it. Ow! Mmm. It's gonna leave a bruise. These are can openers. They're called like P38s. I think. They're supposedly named for how many times you puncture the can all the way around. I discovered these when I was living on the streets and I just did not have room to have a full-size can opener. My husband hates them because he still cannot manage to use them. They do require some hand strength and a little bit of practice. I always think like, what if our can opener stops working? And it's like, then we'll probably buy another one that everyone in the household can use because it's kind of shitty to just have one that only you can use and then be like, well, figure it out. I'm not that type of person. At least I try not to be. They come in a bigger version and a smaller version. I think I'll just keep one up here 
because it makes me happy, this little magnetic strip we have on the fridge. And the rest, I'll put downstairs with the survival food. <laughs> An empty box. Empty. Aho! The phone holder for the car that broke off and someone put it on the shelf, probably thinking maybe I can fix it someday. No, this is going in the trash. Why? Why? We are sleep deprived every single night. We are trying to figure out doctors. We might need to travel because doctors in our area are not being helpful. And if we go to Seattle, we could find better doctors. But we're not sure we have the money for that. And there's a lot involved in travel and stuff. So we have big stuff to figure out. Big important stuff that is making our lives very intense. And we're putting broken shit on the shelf thinking that we're gonna have time to fix it. No, we don't. Not on a few hours of sleep, not with our precious free time that we're trying to use to eat and clean and have a life, <laughs> a little bit of a life. Oh man, it's not really that dire, it just feels that way sometimes. No, oh no. What just now fell into there is the nail. But I'm also seeing a supplement thing and a eraser thing. Ugh, I really want to get a new stove one of these days. Ew, that's been in there for a while. No, that's disgusting. Make sure there's nothing else weird down there. Well, while I'm at it, let me clean that. So, I'm not actually working on stuff that's going to achieve my goals currently. I'm aware of that. But once I get momentum on something, it's hard to not follow that. I asked my therapist once, I was like, what's the word for when you like need to do a thing, but then like you get really inspired to do something else instead? That's also important. It's just not quite as important as the thing that you need to do. And she was like, Heidi, it's called avoidance. <laughs> it's like, oh yeah, okay. All right, so let's try to stop avoiding here. But I wanna show you what I did. So there's the stove. There's things all nicely organized. There's this weird spot behind the stove here and then there's like more cabinetry there. If you have a really small arm, you can kind of fit your arm there. Sometimes I leave things there for my toddler to discover because he just likes that. But okay, I, I did that because it was bothering me, but that, this is the whole dysfunctional area that I need to work on, all of this. This is my solution for spices. This is a seedling tray. We just needed to free up cupboard space. My idea was this way we can see all of our spices. They are out of the light. They are down on the floor, which means it's gonna be cooler. I was really excited. It is reachable to my toddler and he enjoys pulling it out and throwing the seasonings everywhere. So that's why they're always going everywhere, but he enjoys it and it doesn't really cause much harm. Let's try setting you up here. Get some accountability while I tackle that corner. All right, wish me luck. Here it goes. I'm gonna start by putting something dishes away so that if he falls down as I access it. I can definitely feel that avoidance rearing its head, but I gotta keep my eye on the goal here. Ooh, that didn't get cleaned. Nope. I made cornbread muffins the other day. I'm so proud of these, even though they didn't turn out the way that I would hoped. I'm excited because I didn't use any flour at all for them. It was just cornmeal and like baking soda and all that. I can't do gluten. And I just didn't know there was a recipe out there that just used cornmeal. Most of them use a mix and I didn't have a mix and we couldn't afford a mix out of food stamps for the month. We're actually gonna need to go to the food bank next week, which we try to avoid. They just give you a whole big box and a lot of this food that I can't eat and some of this food that is a food poison with the meats are usually pretty questionable. I've actually received meats that expired over a year ago. <laughs> so. We're gonna have to go to the food bank. But I was just like, you know what? I made chili, I really want cornbread with it, and I had the cornmeal. And so I looked at recipes, and sure enough, there's a way to make it without flour. They're kind of a greater texture than I wanted. It might be because I had polenta grits, which I'm not sure, it might be like a, a more coarse grain than coarse cornmeal. Not sure like where that is on the spectrum, but it was pretty good. Good to know in a pinch that that's an option. I know this is me doing more avoidance, putting stuff away, but it's easier to access this corner if this is taken care of. Sometimes I feel it makes more sense to just do the thing that you want to do really quick than to spend all this time fighting it. But I don't know, maybe that's just me wanting to be avoided. 
I actually got this for free from a neighbor. I was using it to boil apples that had codling moth in them. And then it sat outside for a while and it needs to be cleaned. This goes to the stock pot. I'm putting the stock pot in our bathtub to clean because this thing is just not big enough. Okay, I love this spoon rest. I had it situated next to the microwave, but then everything kind of went downhill. It says, want a spoon? <laughs> Man, this corner is scary. So we've got little juicer and big juicer. Big juicer is going to go to the thrift store. Little juicer is going to get set up somewhere where I can actually use it. This goes to big juicer. This goes to big juicer. This goes to the little juicer. This goes to big juice. Oh, why is that stuff in it? No, icky. Oh man. I mean, at least this isn't the part of the juicer that you actually eat from, but I didn't want to donate it all gross. Okay, this goes to the little juicer. This goes to Little Juicer. This, oh. this goes to Little Juicer. Let me show you something. Using our stove as counter space. That's our normal. Also, the oven is on right now, but it's on a very low setting, so I hope it'll be okay. Yeah, it's not too bad. Sometimes when the oven is on a high setting, then it's like, oh, set that paper down on the stove. <laughs> We've had some plastic melt. Not too bad, though. Usually we catch it in time. <laughs> Usually. This goes to Big Juicer. This goes to Big Juicer. Okay, this is the main unit of Little Juicer. And the main unit of Big Juicer has the juicing component of Little Juicer. See, I don't have time for this crap. We, our lives, do not have time to sort this stuff out. So, I'm glad I'm getting this taken care of. I need a box to put Big Juicer in. Sorry, my oven's making weird sounds. Hmm. And then this part can just dry on top. Okay, let me double check I have everything for a little juicer. We have the thingy and that thingy, which fits into that thingy. And this thingy. Okay, cool, we have all the things. The juicer gets out of here. again. I use these empty glass honey jars for things like making my own salad dressing. Works great. I also like how easy they are to clean. Free rolling pin I got from a neighbor that I have not yet used. I just had these hopes and dreams. I don't think that's going to tip over. Famous last words. This is a nut milk bag for straining nut milk. I really want to get into oat milk making because I use it a lot and it's super expensive. I'm still getting the hang of recipes for that. But hopefully I have the chance to experiment more with that soon. Ah, I've used this. It's in a box right now because it's really sharp and spiky. The box is the easiest way to make sure that no one like impales themselves with it. But we have an apple tree in the back and it's had a ton of apples. I am working on getting the codling moth problem under control, which without pesticides is really tricky. So we haven't actually been able to enjoy eating the apples, but we do get a lot of apples from the food bank. This just saves so much time when you have, you know, a dozen or more apples, and it's fun to use, so I need a good spot for it. This might be a good candidate for the upper cupboards. I just put a nice big gash in our door with this step stool. Great thing about owning your own home is you do damage and you're like, oops, rather than like, oh no, I have to report this to the landlord. <sighs> All right, let me show you. I don't even know what's in these cupboards. There's my salad spinner, look! My salad spinner, I've been looking for that and I've been looking for this too. These are my fancy system for bringing double eggs to like a potluck or something. I know there's like porcelain ways of doing that. I got that when I was living in an RV and I'm all for the lightweight solutions. Oh, that was perfect. As long as I can remember that it's up there. <laughs> salad spinner, case in point. Okay. Ah. I've almost got this cleared off. 
My husband was really excited to use these and then he was so disappointed with this particular brand and how they acted. So let me set it aside and ask him what he wants to do with it. It might just end up in our compost. Oh, I love these muffin tins. That needs to be washed again. Okay, wow. I am not affiliated with this brand at all, but Caraway, get the muffin pan. Even if you get nothing else. The muffin pan is heavy, but even if you don't put any oil in these whatsoever, muffins just pop right out and it basically doesn't need to be washed. It Nothing sticks on this and I love it so much. Oh yeah, I remember this. <gasps> I've been looking for this. I have an immersion blender that doesn't work without this piece and I found it. Yay. <laughs> Uh, I'm trying, I'm trying. All right, and this is where I put my food processor. Oh, there's my mom's basket that I borrowed. Let me get that back to her. <laughs> it's embarrassing. The covered porch is where I'm supposed to keep a lot of my garden stuff, but I can't access it right now. There is a back door if I like go outside and around, but no one wants to do that in the dead of winter. This is what I'm starting with. So I'm actually thinking of trying to put this black thing over here and have this stainless steel table coming straight out here. It'd mean a little bit less space in the middle of the kitchen, but that table might actually be usable as counter space then. We'll see if I can find a way to make this all work. Ooh. Love it how well that rolls when I, when I unlock it. Let me show you something. So this is our dishwasher. This is what it empties into. It's just a five gallon container. And we pour water in the top using this picture here. So you just pour water into the top of it. And then it's plugged in and everything. And it's just this cute little portable dishwasher. So our kitchen obviously came with no dishwasher and there was no room to put one because of the doors that are in the way. So this is our solution. I got it off of Vine and it is amazing. We use it every single day, sometimes twice in a day. It's made it so much easier to do dishes. I put up this privacy stuff and I love it. I know it's a little bit cheesy, but it makes me happy, so. I want to try this one over in this corner. That might actually be kind of perfect, but we'll see. I haven't moved all the pieces yet. Now that is a really sharp corner. I'm gonna need to get a corner protector on that. Not necessarily for my toddler's sake, for our sake. <laughs> Let me see if, so in theory, in order to access that door, it's still a tricky thing to do, but I could. I'm gonna find a better spot for the microwave. Could I put the stove on top of the microwave? I mean, this has some feet on the bottom. Let's just see. Playing. We're playing. Ugh. Okay. Yeah, let's just try this. It's just slightly too big. Oh, it looks so nice though. And this has vents on top, so we couldn't put the microwave on top. Or could we? I don't know how much clearance does it need. <clears throat> Maybe that would work? I don't know, I'm kind of scared. <laughs> Let's just see what this is made of here. Feet are plastic, but the rest of the underside is metal. Ooh, I have an idea. Oh, I hope this works. Okay, please work, please work. See, I'm nervous about this falling, especially when it's full of water. Oof. Oh yeah. Oh, my toddler would be able to fall, pull that down on himself. Man! So I had to do some off-camera work because I ran out of battery. But I'm so excited to show you. Look at this. I ended up moving this over here. I didn't realize it would fit in this spot perfectly, just like that. I will have to unplug some things in order to open the door but at least it's not stuff that's plugged in way over here and behind a bunch of stuff. Look at that. 
there's more surface area. This is my list of my goals. So I want better access to the microwave. I want it to be able to get out the door. And then I want to, the toaster oven safely set up. Fun and connection while doing it. I would say that I have fun. <laughs> this is like, you know, a remodel in a day, something like that. Uh, I really love this table that I got and it has this shelving here and that's adjustable. You can either have wheels or also came with little leg like, things and this is just really heavy duty. Oh, let me show you moving this. Unplug the things, my nut milk maker, my juicer, and the microwave. Unlock the wheels, and then, da 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 da, and you can kind of just put this wherever it makes the most sense. And then, I can access it again. I'm so excited. I'm very proud of myself. Finding ways to make life work, especially creative ways to make life work, and honestly, that's part of what has kept us lower income because a part of me finds it fun or even noble to find creative ways to make low finances work. And that is a great skill to have, but when you employ that skill a lot and it becomes your main way of getting by, you're just increasing the skill of being poor <laughs> and that's where we're currently at. So I love being creative like this. It is my forte. I'll do it all day. It makes me happy and I feel so accomplished. But it would also be good to earn enough income that we could remodel the kitchen and that would also make me happy. And I have to help my brain find these new pathways so that I want to reach for that. I spent a lot of time today doing this. I spent several hours and as much fun as it was, I would rather have a kitchen that works. I'm sure I will look back on it with fondness, but it's also going to be nice someday to have money. And I'm starting to remind myself of that more and more in the past few weeks so that it motivates me to put more of my effort towards that rather than increasingly honing my skills at being poor. <laughs> so, thanks for hanging out with me today. I am so excited at what I accomplished here. This is going to make our kitchen much more usable. And I will see you in the next video. Bye. One more diced tomato score. I had caffeine. <laughs> this is bad, guys. I don't know what I'm going to do with this. It feels like a new space. <laughs>